In today's video, we're hopping into our DeLorean and traveling back to the future, the past, and a little bit of the present as one company gears up for the future ahead while another company has to deal with the controversy of today. Hello everyone, my name is Amir and welcome to another video here on Arc Overload. In today's video, we'll be talking about Facebook's metaverse as well as some of the recent controversy that has come Apple's way with their upcoming lineup of iPhone 14 phones and iCloud being down for a few hours earlier today. But more on that in a little bit. Starting with the future and Facebook's metaverse. The metaverse continues to be making headlines as it grows up according to a new article by Forbes. In that article, it highlights how the Web3 space has quote, become diverse in its offerings from video gamers to sellers of NFTs, builders of virtual buildings, and the craziest thing to me, purchasers of property, of virtual property. Look, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. I have for a very long time, and it is insane here right now. The cost of living is through the roof. Not only is the cost of groceries and gasoline at an all-time high, but buying a house in this area is near impossible. And trust me, friends, I have friends and family who are real estate agents who even they'll admit to you that this is the most abnormal thing that they've ever seen. So with property becoming more and more scarce and harder to get, I guess it only makes more sense for there to be virtual property that you can buy and then do something with it, maybe turn it into a resort or something, and then charge people to virtually visit that resort. It's crazy to me that we're gonna be moving to this virtual world, this very Ready Player One world, where we're gonna put on our Oculus headsets, our VR headsets, and immerse ourselves in that environment and communicate with one another in that fashion. But it's also just as jarring to me that we're actually going to be visiting world destinations that maybe are not possible here in our physical realm, but very much possible in the virtual realm. It's something that I'm truly excited to see. The article goes on and headlights VR Direct's co-founder and managing director, Rolf Eilenberger, who quote, shared his vision of a more practical, business-focused metaverse. It would involve marketing, human resources, manufacturing, training, safety planning, and the offering of 360 degree virtual showrooms where customers can look up close at a Porsche that they're thinking of purchasing before they buy it or actually going on a museum tour of the Nestle Chocolate Factory. In a jaw-dropping statistic, a study by PwC PricewaterhouseCoopers claims that by 2030, there will be $1.5 trillion of global economic output through virtual reality and augmented reality. They gathered this data by looking at existing industries like healthcare, for example, and forecasting how the use of VR AR applications could actually help bring the cost of healthcare expenses down while helping diagnose patients more efficiently and quote, ensure higher success rates in surgical procedures. I find it truly fascinating that VR AR technology can be used to not only decrease operating costs, but be an effective tool to help patients and other customers in other fields have an overall better customer experience. I'm gonna take a quick break from the stories just to let you know that I'm on a personal mission to get this Arc Overload channel to 1,000 subscribers. With your help, I recently surpassed the 700 subscriber mark and I'm now on my way to 800, trying to get to 900 and trying to get to 1,000 on this Arc Overload channel. If you enjoy this content and you wanna show your support in any way possible, then hitting that subscribe button would be the absolute best way to do it. I thank you so much for doing that and for supporting this channel. And now, on to more news. But speaking of a pleasant customer experience, that was not the case when Apple's iCloud servers and services went down for a few hours. That's right, folks. As The Verge reported for a brief period of time today, as many of its cloud-based services like iMessage, iCloud Mail, Keychain, the App Store, Apple Music, Apple TV Plus, and podcasts all were down in the afternoon. It was pandemonium chaos, I exaggerate. My experience in all of this was that earlier today I had a couple free hours where I wanted to revisit Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, my first time watching it since I watched it in the theater opening day. And I go to Apple TV Plus to purchase it, and there it is for me to click. I click on it, I enter my password, and I just see spinning wheel over and over and over and over again. I restart it, I go through the process again, I click purchase again, and just spinning, 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 spinning. Now at this point, I'm paranoid that I purchased this movie twice, if not three times, because I clicked on that thing three times before it finally went through, but I double checked my bill and made sure I only got charged once. But I wasn't the only one sent back to the old days and not being able to watch what I wanted the second I wanted to. Reports of Apple Store systems being down made its way to Twitter, like this photo where everything was being written on paper just to keep track of the transactions. 
But by 3.45 Eastern, everything was back online and all was right in the iCloud world. And I was able to enjoy my movie, which is equally as good the second time, if not better. You know, I recently made the plunge and actually purchased the two terabyte Apple One membership plan because I was getting sick and tired of running out of space on my 200 gig version of my iCloud account. And there's something weird about paying 10 bucks a month, at least in my opinion, to rent the ability to have your photos synced throughout all your devices, your mail, your notes, all that kind of stuff. It's super convenient. And at the end of the day, that's why I did it because I'm writing a ton of notes nowadays thanks to this channel. I'm taking a ton of photos thanks to being a dad and I don't wanna lose any of it. And I frankly don't have the time to organize all of it. So I need someone to do it for me. I guess that's why the service is awesome. Plus I love the fact that it comes with fitness and that it has given me a second chance of trying out Apple Music. So if you have any playlists that you personally think are amazing, specifically in the uh, pop punk or rock genre, please send them my way. A recent article in Forbes highlights the recent published detailed schematics of Apple's flagship iPhone 14 Pro. The notch is finally gone, but its replacement is being called the eye cutout or the pill and punch hole combination. It also highlights how Apple's more affordable iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Max phones, notice there's no mini in there, will have the same A15 Bionic chip that the iPhone 13 has, but the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max versions will have the new A16 Bionic chip, making the Pro phones stand out that much more against the regular phones, and therefore possibly driving up the price. The cutouts will house the Face ID sensors and selfie camera, and the front has symmetrical bezels on all corners with the top bezel accommodating the speaker grill. Forbes claims that, quote, Apple seems determined to widen the gap between the pro and non-pro hardware across its entire product range. So like I said, the pro versions of the phones will have the A16 Bionic chips, while the regular iPhone 14 and 14 Max editions will have the A15 Bionic chips. And it seems like the notchless design is only being saved for the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max version of the phones, while the iPhone 14 will look very similar, if not identical, to what the iPhone 13s look like right now. Lastly, the Mac Studio, which made its way to the masses just last week, has already hit a bit of controversy, as it was found unless you pay to upgrade your SSD storage, you cannot update it yourself. YouTuber Luke Miani made an excellent video that I'll link below where he tore down two Mac Studios, took the SSD from one of the Mac Studios, and tried to put it into the second one. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. I'll link his video in the description below for you to check out if you haven't. It's an excellent video and I encourage you to check it out. And although I don't own a Mac Studio, I can understand the frustration in this. Let's say right now when you purchase a Mac Studio, you're thinking to yourself, look, I only need a one terabyte or a two terabyte version. I don't need a four terabyte or eight terabyte version. That could very well be the case right now today. But what about two years from now? What about three years from now? What about five years from now when you're like, I'm running out of space and I'm downloading all these additional programs and programs are getting beefier, Final Cut requires more, After Effects requires more space, these coding programs that I'm using require more space and I just don't have it. I'm running out, what do I do? And there's only so much external stuff that I wanna use. I don't want these things to be internal. How do I upgrade this? Well, you can't. Now, Apple does suggest on their website that they highly encourage you that if you think that you need more space to just purchase the more space right now, but that is the Apple tax that everyone complains about because while you can get an external SSD or an internal SSD on Amazon for fairly cheap in comparison to what Apple is charging because Apple's prices for upgrading from a two terabyte to a four terabyte or a four terabyte to an eight terabyte is astronomical. It is a $2,200 difference to upgrade from a one terabyte to a eight terabyte internal SSD drive. And that's just an incredible amount of money that I agree with people when they say it's not fair that they can't change it out on their own. Simultaneously, Apple has a right to run their company however they feel fit. And there are people out there who, like me, are willing to pay the 10 bucks a month for the Apple One membership because they enjoy the convenience of it. There are people out there who are willing to pay the extra additional money for the eight terabyte hard drive because they just want someone to do it for them. They don't wanna to have to deal with it themselves. And at the end of the day, the Mac Studio with its super incredibly difficult process to open is very much for those who just want to plug and play. 
that's what it seems like, even though it's for creative professionals. It's for creative professionals who just wants to, in the words of Ron Peel, set it and forget it. Let me know if you caught that reference in the comment section below. Now, it's not like Apple is hiding from this. They completely own it. If it wasn't obvious before that Apple is not a fan of people tweaking their hardware and their software, they're shouting it from the rooftops now. I mean, this is the company that charges $700 for a set of wheels that you can attach to your Mac Pro. So, I mean, are we really that surprised? With that said, I will say that I agree with the frustrations that it is unfortunate that you cannot upgrade the Mac Studio on your own. We really did view that as the ultimate creator machine, but it just so happens that you can't really update that machine, unfortunately. So you're kind of stuck with the version that you get, even if five, six, seven years from now, you might need a RAM upgrade or an SSD upgrade or some sort of upgrade. Instead of just spending a couple hundred dollars and upgrading that one part, you have to purchase an entirely new machine. Let me know what you think about that and all the stories in today's video in the comment section down below. And one more time, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you can, if you like, help me get to that 1,000 subscriber milestone. You guys have been awesome so far. I have gained almost 200 subscribers in the last two videos that I have posted. So I appreciate your support more than you absolutely know. Thank you so much again for watching this video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you'd like, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.